neighborhood podcast host, Charlie Reimer. We're coming to you from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, the golf capital of the world. I hope 2022 is off to a great start for all the golfers out there. And I know we're on fire here in Myrtle Beach with golf. And that gets us to our special guest today, Craig Chen. Craig is uh, with one of our amazing package providers here in Myrtle Beach uh, Golf Track, your director of operations. Uh, Craig, welcome to the show. Welcome to our brand new studio. Thanks, Charlie. It's nice. Everything looks great in here. Good well, job. Well, I, I spent a lot of time, you know, hammering yeah, and sure. and putting all this <laughs> studio together. But we're, we've got a great place to be based out of now. And uh, really proud of this studio. It's going to be neat as we uh, develop the studio even more. We're going to be getting uh, souvenirs and cool little knickknacks. All your sort of awards. Stuff. Yeah, all this, your this awards. is my award shelf area right here. But we're, we're going to be getting cool stuff from uh, all the golf courses in the area and the bars and the restaurants yeah. and all of that. So yeah. uh, it, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch this uh, studio grow. So spe speaking of growth, how about the game of golf? I mean, for all the wrong reasons, the pandemic, uh, it, it, believe me, I know it was a tough, tough ordeal, about took me out, but uh, golf is experiencing this unbelievable surge because of pandemic. And, and talk to me a little bit about what happened here in Myrtle Beach in 2021 in terms of the number of visitors that we had here playing some golf. Sure, so um, 2021 was a, a bounce back year. Um, tra the traveling golfer, the buddy trip, the lady friend trip, everybody trip was fantastic in 2021. And uh, so far going into 2022, it's uh, something like I've never seen before. We're getting uh, so many folks that well, we've got a wonderful airport. We've got a lot of flights coming in nonstop from, gosh, I think uh, we're over 50 destinations. I believe now. so. And I, I fly in and out of Myrtle Beach a, a, a lot. Uh, I love our airport, and in fact, when Southwest started coming last year, it was really cool because they don't hit you up for the <laughs> fee, you know, for the baggage fee. But most of our folks are drive to here in Myrtle Beach, correct? Yeah, that's it. We have about eighty-five percent of our customers that we find are drive to. Um, I, I still believe I like, love the direct flights, like you said. There's over fifty locations coming in. Um, airports growing, airports growing. It, that 85% starting to come down a little bit more as the more fly in, but uh, still a big drive to destination. You, you've been in this business quite some time. Uh, t tell me um, what's going on now um, in terms of bookings, pre bookings for 2022 here in Myrtle Beach and beyond. I've got to think it's pretty hot. It is extremely hot. It is extremely hot from the golf tee times lodging facilities, uh, restaurants are, are full every night now. I remember years and years ago, places were closed and now in this winter time, and now they're open 365 days a year. It's, it's unbelievable the growth and, and, and how hot the booking season has been for spring 2022. Yeah, I know a lot, lot of our golfers that come in, especially ones coming from mid Midwest and maybe Northeast, uh, they hadn't traveled a whole lot recently. Um, the experience here in South Carolina is a little bit different than maybe what they're seeing at home. You, you don't have to show that vaccine card when you're going out to dinner in that's, these parts. That's correct. That's, uh, I think that has a big thing to do with, um, you know, more travelers wanting to come here, you know, and, and the Myrtle Beach has grown so much over the years and, and the new cool things. We got a bunch of breweries here. There's things to do after golf. Um, family friendly, you know, music, things, music live music everywhere, every yeah. night, everywhere, live music. Yeah, and I'm not saying in December, January, February, it's going to be 82 every day, but you can catch a day that's 82. I think we're going to hit 64 today. Yeah, exactly. You know? We're in the middle of January right, right now. Right. Right around Christmas, we had, we had, between Christmas and New Year's, it was spectacular. Unbelievable, unbelievable yeah. weather. Fantastic. And the thing about it is with our weather patterns is we, if we get a couple of days, a flood comes through and uh, you, you turn on the news, you can see, you, you know, all this snow in New York and Buffalo and Rochester and all that. But we might get a day of rain. The next day it's a little bit windy. And the following day, because we're sand based, the golf course is dry and we're back, you know, in the upper 50s again. Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's crazy. It's, it's great. That's what makes us great is our, uh, I mean, just the storm that came through last week. It was above us. We don't get what everybody else thinks we get. Our weather is always 
pretty good. We have about 21 days of really cold. Yeah. Um, and but they're, they're not consecutive. And they're not consecutive. Yeah. They're sporadic, like you said. Rain, wind, sunshine. One of the sports that us locals enjoy, folks, is going over to the beach in the middle of winter and seeing who's swimming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's our Canadian friends have had a hard time getting down from sure. Canada. They've really been locked down. But that, it is nothing to see some Canadians out there swimming in the middle of February. Yeah. We're all bundled up. That's right. Parkins at locals. Yeah. Almost like they're doing the polar plunge. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. it's normal for them. Exactly. So talk, talk to me a little bit about uh, the, the, what, what, what you guys do at Golf Trek. Let's go there first. Sure. So uh, Golf Trek's been around since 1979. Uh, been in the package business here in Myrtle Beach. Um, we have 12 golf masters, PGA guys, great college players, couple mini tour guys, all selling golf. Um, we do every golf course here at the beach. Wait, 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 let's, let's back up a little bit. So folks who call Golf Trek okay. and, and they're interested in putting together a trip, I mean, maybe they've got a date and a certain number of people that they're interested in. The person they're talking to that's answering that phone is a PGA professional. Not all of them, but they're a certified golf master is what we call our our, okay. our service team. Um, they're someone really familiar. With yeah, the they game. have either been in the PGA program before or PGM members that yeah. went to school for PGM, uh, lived here you know, 20 years, local, knows everything, where everything is. Get your tea time, um, your accommodations, keep your golf close to where your accommodations are, help you out with what you want to do for dinner, um, yeah. where you want to go get a steak, right around here, and you know, so. Yeah, and, that, and that's really important because it's, if you start, if you're not familiar with the area, and, and you start trying to book things on your own, and, and, you, and you look at the area, and where, the way I look at it from Georgetown, South Carolina, way up into North Carolina, um, maybe 70 miles right and we're over a golf course a mile when you break it down sure and you're trying to trying to book and let's say you find a place that you like staying up north that looks great on the internet and and you go man I want to play this Caledonia and you get here and it's like I'm playing in Caledonia at 8 tomorrow morning and it's an hour and 15 minutes to get there every bit right every so bit that, that can end up being sure. not such a great trip sure. if you've got these big long commutes sure and, and what they don't understand is it's an hour and 15 each way. You're right. So exactly. now you got, you're in the car, heading home, and getting cleaned up. Right. And, and if you're like the guys I play with, somebody's going to be designated driver. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause when we finish golf, we're going to enjoy a beverage. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, but that, but that's, that's back to my point, the way you guys book, have somebody who really knows the ins and outs. They're not, they're not going to have somebody staying at a place that's inconvenient to where they want to play golf. Yeah, absolutely. Correct. Yeah. And, and the, other, the other thing that I encourage folks to do is when you come to Myrtle Beach, you're not going to get it all in one trip, two trips, three trips. You know, so, so I break it down north, central, and south. You know, so it, look, look to play in all our great courses up north and restaurants, they're, they're different character than maybe what you see down south and then compare that to in the middle again it, it's it is a lot of variance in the kind of golf you get kind of restaurants you get the kind of culture that are in those three areas but um come do all three you know yeah it's coming three you know three times in five years make sure you do a different one each year you'll figure out which one you like sure. best you're not gonna hate any of them but. that's correct and actually we break it down to more like five destinations right because yeah. you have your brunswick county your North Myrtle Beach, your Central Myrtle Beach, your 501 corridor. Mm -hmm. Then you have your uh, Merle's Inlet with TPC, things like that. Then your Pauly's Island where Caledonian yeah, Heritage. And, 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 yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Maybe break that down a little bit further. You've got the five areas. Um, just, just sort of real quickly, let's go over that. Uh, I, I live down in the Pauly's Island area, so obviously well, I'm familiar with the whole area. I've been coming since I was probably about three years old. but. It just character-wise and feel-wise, Polly's Island. When I say that to you, what, what do you think about with Polly's? Uh, old, the old historic Spanish moss, oaks, um, great golf. You've, one of my favorite designer was Strance, mm -hmm. and he's got two of the best down there. Um, and Caledonian True Blue. Yeah, with Caledonian True Blue, and uh, you know Heritage. Polly's Plantation, the view when you come around, yeah. uh, the double green and the par three over the marsh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And that's what makes that area um, a complete different destination than just a little further north. Yeah, and at Frank's Restaurant, 
down there. Frank's out back. Want, let me tell you what, Frank's is, I, I'd take Frank's toe to toe. Ch Charleston's a big food town mm -hmm. on the, on the, really the whole East Coast, but especially in the Southeast. I'd take Frank's up against anything in Charleston, South Carolina. He knows what he's doing. He yeah. knows what he's doing. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. One of the best here. Well, let's move a little bit north. You mentioned the 501 corridor. T tell me how that's a little bit different. So uh, going out 501, kind of like the gateway into Myrtle Beach, you've got your World Tour, uh, World Tour, the Arrowhead, your Legends Resort, your Myrtle Beach National that kind of was built in the 70s, late 70s, um, Arnold Palmer Designs, uh, and a few more other courses out there. Lodging, the furthest course is uh, maybe 15 miles from the oceans. You can yeah. be oceanfront, 15 miles out, right by the uh, Coast of Carolina University campus. Yeah, a little, fa a little faster pace. Yep, yep, yep. More open, more of your link style because they kind of took trees out and things like that, but. Yep. Uh, and then we move a little bit farther north, maybe more Central Myrtle Yeah, Beach. Central Myrtle Beach, where the granddaddy. Um, Myrtle Woods been there for, I think both Myrtle Woods were two of the original <laughs> top 10 courses designed you, here. You, you mentioned Myrtle Wood. Uh, um, when I was a junior golfer, I was a stud because I was this size and the rest of them <laughs> were about half my size. And the first state championship I won it was at Myrtle Wood. Okay. There, there's two courses there. The Palmetto course, the other one is uh, Pine... Pine Hills. Pine Hills. It's been redone. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, when, when I was a kid and I won that tournament, it was like so far out in the middle of nowhere, you sure. couldn't believe it. And now it's, boom, it's right in the middle of everything. Yeah, it's right in the middle of Myrtle Beach. Yeah, uh, but it really, really, two really good... Yeah, uh, and then you, then you you know, in that same location, Grand Dunes, and even, you know, from that area, the 501 corridor is still 15 minutes to yeah. there. Yeah, you Dunes. Know. If you can get get a chance to play Dunes, uh, Dunes is is. Um, uh, I, I, listen, I can't have favorites. I, somebody asked me what your favorite course in Myrtle Beach, and I'm like, you got kids, and somebody says, yeah, I'm like, tell me what your favorite kid is. You just can't, yeah. you know, can't do it. But, right. But Dunes is uh, all definitely on a must play list, and and you know, may, maybe it's one you only get to play once in your life, but it's it's, it's special. Yeah, it's special. It's something that that you definitely. We'll remember. Absolutely. And, and always in great shape too. Fantastic and, shape, the history, just the drive in and just the service and the condition and again, the history, it's it's top notch. Yeah, and then so we'll move a little north. Uh, I think this is maybe our fourth area that, that uh, as you define them, sort of North Myrtle Beach, up in the Little River. Mm -hmm. So there's some beautiful golf courses tucked in there. Absolutely, so you're getting in that North Myrtle Beach section, you have the four, fantastic four at Barefoot. Uh, resort and golf, Tidewater, um, then you get a little river, Glen Dornick, right on the intercoastal waterway. Glen Dornick is one that that gets overlooked, I think, sometimes. It does. That is a heck of a golf it does. course. No homes on the golf course. Yeah, one right, of the very right few. Right on the intercoastal. Beautiful intercoastal views. And uh, um, when you're hungry, there's some pretty good eating in those parts, They're too. right on the waterfront, that, yeah. that little river waterfront. Fantastic. Yeah. And then, and then just north of there, we get into North Carolina, and, and of course that's Calabash. That, sure. That's where they breed all those little baby shrimp. The, the fried baby <laughs> shrimp, the popcorn <laughs> shrimp. I, I can remember five years old, sunburn, mm. you know, been on the beach and played golf. I was happy and I'd go in there and you'd go to one of those Calabash style restaurants and I, I loved a buffet, I still do. And you go, you know, scoop up, I'd get my whole plate full of those Calabash oh, shrimp. Oh man, uh, yeah. If you have never had any Calabash shrimp, folks, actually made in Calabash, North Carolina, you hadn't lived life. Right off the boat, uh, right in Calabash River, they bring it right in. Man, they're so good. So, sometimes my wife and I, we'll, we'll uh, cruise up there in a boat and and actually come come up the inlet and then take a left and go into Calabash. Mm -hmm. And it's it's pretty when you drive there, yeah. but when you come in on a boat, it's a whole... Yeah different level of pretty it's just an amazing area yeah it's really it's really nice and with the golf up there it's fantastic golf uh, probably 20 golf courses within a 15 mile that again 15 minutes you can be to really good golf i'm charlie reimer and i'm here to tell you that golfers <laughs> we're different we aren't afraid to go for it we're dedicated <laughs> And we never stop. Not every place gets us, but one does. Myrtle Beach, 78 courses, 60 miles of beach. You could say we were made for each other. The beach gets golfers. Golfers get the beach. 
So one of the things you guys do with, with Golf Track is for, for your customers booking, you, you got this cool app. Yes. So, so tell me tell me how that works. Yep. So every person that books a golf package with us, it basically controls their entire itinerary, palm of their hand. Everybody in the group, you know, large group of 12, uh, everybody is on the same page with the app. It shows the, uh, you know, your tee times, your lodging, your door codes. You can book an additional round, news, tournaments, events, uh, restaurant recommendations mm -hmm. on all those locations we talked about. It would pick your location and suggest where you should go eat and uh, have some cold beverages and yeah. things like that. But um, and, it's, and, and it's a good idea after you've been to keep that app on your phone because you guys throughout the course of the year are able to send some messages in from time to time, maybe on some specials or don't forget to book this, that or the other. It's a nice way to stay connected with golf here in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, we push the notifications to them. Hey, you know, it's weather's nice come on down short weekend quick weekend so we can push messages to them and uh the response has been fantastic on it you know because there's nothing like this in the market yeah so um the response has been fantastic we're very proud of it we worked hard on it all of our team so uh proud of the guys for getting it done well cool now tell me a little bit about um the size of some of the the um packages that you, you guys have booked. I mean, you, what's the biggest package that you've been involved in in booking in terms of number of golfers? Uh, probably 80, yeah. you know, more, and that ends up turning it into more of a, um, like a shot, tournament. shotgun tournament, exactly. Yeah. But it, they're coming on a golf package, but we are great partners with the golf courses and we'll work with the PGA pros and GMs and so on and, and make it work and give the best experience possible. And typical size i mean is it down to two sums four sums what's the most average size that, that uh, you would book i would say the average group is you know, obviously going to come in foursomes um most foursomes to eight groups of four to eight um lodging you know the lodging has kind of changed also right so everybody before uh the bad stuff happened uh, was okay, sharing rooms, you know, two tour bed or two tour room, double yeah. occupancy. Now you're seeing more and more golf, more and more golfers want their own room, right? Right, and th that's fine too. Um, it's you just kind of starting to trend towards your own lodging per person as opposed to double occupancy as it was in the past. But we have large houses, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bedroom homes that. Mm -hmm. Uh, groups will get into and you know, have plenty of space to do whatever they want to do and we have sometimes we've had a chef come in and cater for them and now yeah have the chef there. come in and have maybe the drink of the day for them when they come in after the round so yeah. um, we can pretty much we do every you know every type of lodging but it's again reaching out to our golf guys talking to them let them feel out see what you want what you want to do while you're here right because remember the golf's only the five hour part, unless you got that hour and 15 minute Caledonia drive each way. <laughs> so there's you plenty guys aren't gonna let somebody, unless it's just absolutely necessary, you're not gonna have somebody uh, uh, tackling that hour and 15 minute uh, drive, I know that. So what I'm hearing from you, you, you can have small groups that come in and, and, and on the app, they get door codes, gate codes, everything. They come in, they can do their own deal. Nobody messes with them. They do, do a hotel. Most, most of what we're doing here is, is, is condos or houses mm -hmm. rather than hotels, although we do have some hotel properties. All the way up to the group that says, hey, we want the best of everything. We want the big house on the beach with the chef. Uh, everything's stocked even when they, yep. when they come in, so you don't have to spend time going to the grocery store and all that. So, so it's both ends of the spectrum you guys cover. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. How, how do folks go about finding you do they start at playgolfmyrtlebeach.com they can and our there? listing there is under uh golf track yeah. and uh but our website is yourgolfpackage.com is our flagship website and uh the myrtlebeachgolfapp.com is also uh can directly download the the app and as also one thing i didn't mention is the app has gps yeah um you know for each golf course here so it knows your location it can tell you how far you are from the pen wow it's pretty cool that, Very proud of it. Yeah, that is that is an amazing app. Yeah. Uh, can, can you think about normally you travel, you got to, I, I got to dig up emails, what's my tea time, where, and I always forget the 
code to get in because a lot, a lot of places you got to have a code to get in the gate and then get in the door right. And, right. and all that. But to have that all, boom, right there in the app in front of you, that, that's got to make the trips uh, to Myrtle Beach e even a lot easier than they already are. Sure, absolutely. It makes it easier on the group leader yeah. than makes it easier on the group. And one, one other thing, like a group leader, um, say you're doing a trip for 16 people, um, there's deposits, I'm, I'm sure different times of year's deposit um, that might change a little bit, but on that group leader trying to collect all that money, put it on their credit card, that's a little bit of a challenge. Can, can you guys divide it up so everyone can log in and pay their part? Correct. And so once that group leader books his package with Golf Track, they will immediately get the email to download the Myrtle Beach Golf app. Mm -hmm. Once that's downloaded, that group leader can forward that email to everybody in the group. Everybody can pay their own way, see who's paid, look at the tee times, check out the lodging, you know, where they're staying. And it takes so much pressure off the group leader that has never been able to do that before. Ain't technology wonderful? It's pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty good stuff. All right, I want to finish up with you on this. Um, it's easy, it's fun, everybody wants to come here but our availability, because so many folks are coming, is a little bit of an issue. How, how soon should people start looking at putting together a, a trip to Myrtle Beach? Let's say they want to come later this spring, summer, fall, next year. Should they already be looking into next year right now? Yes. Yeah. If they're coming, if you plan on coming to Myrtle Beach this spring, you need to be on the phone today. Right. Because tea times are, I've never, like I said earlier, I've never seen anything like this as far as advanced bookings, the golf courses with the dynamic pricing, the earlier you book, the more you save. Um, and even with the lodging opportunity, now that more people are staying by themselves, take, you know, they yeah. used to take up a group of 16, would take up eight rooms, right? Two to a room. Now they're taking 16 rooms. Mm. So the lodging opportunities and, and uh, availabilities going crazy. I mean, it's, like I said, never seen anything like it. Well, it's a good problem to have. Absolutely. We'll say that. We'll it's say a that. good problem to have. Well, there you have it, folks. Craig Chen, he's the uh, Director of Operations for Golf Trek, one of our wonderful golf package providers here in Myrtle Beach. Appreciate it. Thanks, Charlie. I'm glad business is good. I'm glad folks are getting here to Myrtle Beach and, and um, enjoying everything that we have to offer. Appreciate and, you. Uh, you got it. Let's Thank do it you. again. And folks, appreciate you joining us right here on Charlie Reimer Balls in the Air podcast. Make sure you like us wherever you download your podcast. And we'll be uh, right back with you next time here on the Balls in the Air podcast.